Time Spiral is just around the corner, and it's bringing back a card aesthetic that I just love, with modern cards printed into the old border from 90s magic. So what better way to celebrate the release of the set, than to once again build a commander deck using only old border cards. Only this time, with a budget, and showcasing many of the new choices we have for a deck like this. So today, we have a very flavorful looking Yogmoth Thran Physician deck, full of Phyrexians, Life Loss, and Card Draw. I built this to a $200 budget to account for some inflated prices on old border cards, along with fitting in some slightly stronger cards to make up for the modern staples we're missing. I've also made the choice to exclude any reserve list cards, as I want this price point to still be relevant in 6 month time, unlike when I did my Rasputin deck a little while ago and is now completely inflated. Onto the deck though, let's look at the commander. Although Yogmoth is one of the first big bads from the history of magic, he was only printed as a legendary creature just two years ago in Modern Horizons. But with Time Spiral giving him an amazing looking reprint in Old Border, he's just the sort of commander we need for a deck like this. Yogmoth is a 2-4 human cleric for 2 and 2 black that reads Protection from Humans, along with Pay 1 Life and Sacrifice Another Creature, put a minus 1 minus 1 counter on up to 1 target creature and draw a card. He also has Pay 2 black and discard a card to proliferate. Yogmoth is a really powerful and interesting commander. He draws cards, he provides a sack outlet and a discard outlet, and he can proliferate counters. In a normal commander deck, he can easily be part of an infinite combo and makes your board state very hard to interact with. But in old border magic, we don't have a creature with undying or ways to make infinite sack outlets in mono black. At least, not without using something like a Phyrexian altar, which is way outside the budget for a deck like this. So I settled on two themes, Phyrexian creatures to give Yogmoth stuff to sacrifice, and reanimation to help bring them back, since Old Border Black is really good at reanimation. The various Phyrexians in the deck do a whole lot of different things, so instead let's start with the reanimation effects. Victimize, Living Death, Coffin Queen, Doom Necromancer, Balathor the Defiled, Phyrexian Delver, Chainer Dementia Master, Scion of Darkness, Animate Dead, and Dawn of the Dead. Victimize lets us trade one creature for two in our graveyard, Doom Necromancer, Phyrexian Delver, and Chain of Dementia Master can give us reanimation on creatures, and Coffin Queen, Scion of Darkness, and Animate Dead can be used to steal our opponent's creatures. Living Death and Balathor can be used to mash reanimate our graveyard, and with Yogmoth having a sacrifice outlet, we can also sack our entire board before our Living Death so that we don't lose anything. This really is black strength in Old Border, so I really want to take advantage of it as much as possible. And hey, at worst, just give us more creatures to sacrifice to Yogmoth. But if we're frequently paying life to sacrifice, how do we stay alive? Let's talk about drain effects. Drain life, soul burn, and corrupt can be used to turn our black mana into damage to kill a creature or attack an opponent directly. Zulaport Cutthroat can be used to gain back the life we lose when we use Yogmoth's ability, as well as draining our opponents. And Grey Merchant of Asphodel can give us a huge life swing in a mono black deck like this. Unfortunately, life gain was not really a black mechanic at this time. But these two new cards in Old Border really give the deck that extra push and power that it needs to be dangerous. Both being usable as finishes, and also just useful on the board to keep us in the game. But no deck should rely solely on the commander, so we have three extra sacrifice outlets to help keep the cycles going. Phyrexian Ghoul, Phyrexian Plague Lord, and Dark Privilege. Phyrexian Ghoul is just a pure sacrifice outlet, while Plague Lord can act as small removal with its ability. Dark Privilege can be used to give Yogmoth some protection while he's out, as well as acting as an additional sacrifice outlet if it's needed. These also give us a way to sacrifice Yogmoth, just in case he gets turned into something like an elk, but who would do that? With all these sacrifice outlets though, we do need creatures to sacrifice, so we've got a few token generators and recurrable creatures for that. Brood of Cockroaches and Endless Cockroaches both return to our hand when they die, giving us an endless supply of cockroaches to sacrifice to Yogmoth. Brood is restricted to only once per turn, but at only 2 mana that's a pretty good rate to activate Yogmoth's ability, whereas Endless Cockroaches can be used over and over in a single turn, great for the end game. And really, they just don't make art like this on magic cards anymore. We also have Sengir Autocrat, who makes 3 Surf tokens when he enters, and Infernal Genesis, which lets every player mill a card and make minion tokens. Once again, token generation isn't really Black's wheelhouse at this era of magic, but these should be enough to keep the deck running when we get them out. Next up is an interesting addition to the deck, Poison Counters. One of Yogmoth's abilities is to proliferate, so it only makes sense that we try and take advantage of that by using Poison Counters to kill our opponents. For that we have Swamp Mosquito and Sakatar Assassin. Both of these are hard for our opponents to block, 
And with just one hit and a grip full of cards and mana, we can leave our opponents in a very dangerous position. So that covers the more unique parts of the deck. Let's talk about the glue that holds it all together. For ramp, we have Charcoal Diamond, Felwa Stone, Mind Stone, Star Compass, Saldevi Adnate, Skull of Ramus, Worn Power Stone, Soul Grail, Black Market, and Terrain Generator. We then have the newly old border cards of Everflowing Chalice, Solemn Simulacrum, and Hedron Archive, which replace out some of the much worse ramp we would have had to run prior to Time Spiral releasing. Sadly, I couldn't fit an old border Soul Ring into the price, but at roughly $25 for the cheapest old border version, it's just a little bit too much for this deck. Moving on to the card draw, we have Phyrexian Ranger, Phyrexian Gargantua, Phyrexian Arena, Necrologia, Decree of Pain, and the newly old border Read the Bones and Harvester of Souls. Our commander will also be drawing us lots of cards throughout the game, so this category doesn't need to be too big. Necrologia can be used to refill our hand, a bit like the more expensive Necropotence, and Decree of Silence doubles as a board wipe. Harvester of Souls will let Yogmoth draw two cards instead of one, along with providing some board wipe protection. Moving into removal, and we now find the biggest weakness of an old border mono black deck. You can't deal with enchantments and artifacts. Your targeted removal even struggles against other black creatures, and the board wipes are really overcosted. But let's see what we've got. Mutilate, Living Death, Decree of Pain, and Nevenroll's Disc make up our board wipes, with Nev's Disc being the only way to answer an artifact or enchantment on the field. In targeted removal, we have Tsabo's Assassin, Bone Shredder, and Dark Hatchling for our creatures, along with Ashes to Ashes for Exile Removal, Terra and Snuff Out for Instant Speed Interaction, and of course our Drain Spells from before, Drain Life, Soul Burn, and Corrupt for Damage Based Removal. As you see, we mostly care about removing creatures and controlling the board that way. And our commander can also help out in this matter with his minus one minus one counters when we're sacrificing creatures. Due to the limitations of the color black, we're just gonna have to accept that we can't deal with everything that comes out. Instead, we're gonna worry about the things we have on our board instead of what our opponents are doing. On to getting things out of our graveyard, we of course have all our reanimation from before, but how do we get things back to hand? This is quite limited, unfortunately. Phyrexian and Reclamation can be used to get creatures back to hand, and Junk Diver can be used to bring back artifacts, but otherwise we just have to use our reanimation spells to bring creatures back to the battlefield. This also means we can't get spells back from our graveyard, so once we've played them or had them milled, they're gone forever. For utility, we have a couple of pieces, Bajuka Bog for dealing with graveyards, Phyrexian Splicer to steal abilities from other creatures and to make our own better, along with a Dark Ritual for a bit of fast mana, allowing for a turn to Yogmoth if we want, and a Phyrexian Processor to generate big creature tokens if it's not dealt with. A risky card to be sure, since the life must be paid up front, but it can be very rewarding if it sticks around on the battlefield. And last we have one tutor in the deck, Buried Alive, perfect for putting all our major combo pieces into the graveyard. The land base for the deck is dead simple. Baron Moor and Polluted Mire for some cycling lands, Peat Bog for a bit of extra mana, and it can be proliferated with Yogmoth, Temple of the False God for ramp, Bajuka Bog for graveyard removal, and Terrain Generator for ramp. Along with these, we have 30 basic swamps, and that's it. Lastly, let's mention the rest of the Phyrexians that didn't quite make it into any of the other categories. The Bulk Phyrexians, if you will. Plague Spitter can kill off small creatures, and can double that damage if sacrificed at the right time. Phyrexian Monitor provides a good defensive blocker, and Phyrexian Scooter can enter with plus one plus one counters, perfect for proliferating with Yogmoth. Scourge Familiar can be used to generate mana through discard, along with providing a free discard outlet for our reanimation spells. And Witch Engine can be used to generate four mana, and assuming we have Yogmoth out, can be sacrificed for value before it switches control to another player. And that's the deck. So let's talk about how it plays. I've kept the creature count high in this deck, so we always got things to sacrifice to Yogmoth. The idea is to spend our life and turns digging into our library to find key pieces to kill our opponents with. These combos include using Chainer to recur Grey Merchant multiple times in a turn, or using Balathor to reanimate our entire graveyard into play. We also have our two poison creatures to put pressure on our opponents. These can potentially win us the game if we can generate enough mana and card advantage to use Yogmoth's proliferate ability multiple times in a turn. For that reason, this deck ramps really hard, and you should be able to keep pace even with a green deck at the table if your tools aren't being removed. Black Market can quickly get out of control with sacrificing, 
Terrain generators should always have swamps to put into play, and recurring solemn simulacrum over and over gets really good value. It's entirely possible to then use our drain effects to kill any player that gets too low a life total, while buffering our own for the potential crackback from other players. I love the aesthetics of this deck. The old border and crazy art style of early magic, along with all the warped imagery of the early Phyrexians, really make this deck look amazing to play. In terms of power, I'd probably rate it only about a 6 out of 10 on the power scale. The lack of an infinite combo or tutors does tend to power this down a bit, along with the lack of haste for our really scary creatures. This deck has been built for flavour however, with a bunch of further tuning and a couple more expensive combo pieces, it could become quite deadly. And on that topic, let's talk about the cards that didn't quite make it in. First up is some Phyrexian cards that were way outside the price range of the deck. Phyrexian Tower which provides an additional sacrifice outlet for extra mana, and Phyrexian Altar which provides a sack outlet and enables several infinite combos with Chaina. If it was going to add any card to this deck regardless of price, it would have to be Phyrexian Altar. As with it, we could overhaul several creatures in the deck to make multiple infinite combos to kill our opponents with. From the reserve list, I would really include Carrion to make tokens out of one of our creatures, along with Phyrexian Tribute to give us an extra way to deal with artifacts. Of course, cards like Bolrath Stronghold and Gate to Phyrexia would be really on theme for this deck, but since they're both pushing really high price tags now, I can hardly recommend them. Another card that I really wanted to put into the deck was Grave Pact, which is an amazing control card for the deck. But due to the price tag, I couldn't quite make it fit, though it would really push the deck to the next level in terms of power. Along these lines, Contamination is a brutal stacks piece for a deck like this, though you really want to clear the something like that with your playgroup before you go running it. You don't just run this against strangers. As of recording, we just saw the new Vorinclex with the Phyrexian creature type, so later this year this deck could actually become a tribal deck. If that's the case, cards like Cover of Darkness, Urza's Incubator, and the newly old border Banquist's Banner would also be really good to consider. You'd be able to open this deck up to a lot of tribal synergies then, and gain value that way. And that's the video. I hope you've enjoyed this little adventure into old border magic as much as I have, and I really would encourage you to try this experiment for yourself. It's a really interesting restriction to add to a commander deck, and when it's all out in front of you at a table, it really makes your deck stand out. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.